All right, welcome to this uh, important conversation right here on the program. My name, as always, is Eugene Nangwe. The conversation I'm talking about is that that we've been seeing on various social media platforms. We've seen them tweeting, we've seen them pushing products, and they call themselves social media influencers. Who are they? How do you determine one? And for corporate brands, what do you do when you're trying to choose whether to work with a social media influencer or the traditional platforms for marketing. These are some of the things we'll be talking about right here on the program, so stick around. Let me introduce our panelists. We have Eliud Kagema, who's actually a consultant and also media buyer and works with RG Consult. Thank you for, so much for being with us on the program. You're welcome, Eugene. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Right, Happy New Year. Although <laughs> the month is also over, the year is ending and everything, you know. Yeah. And also we have Jackie Lumbasi, a media specialist and also the voice behind Kigali in the morning on Royal FM. Thank you for joining us on the program. Is all, all right. Also with us is Ken Agutamba, not new to the program, a communication consultant, impact communication strategist. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. Let's start this conversation from that particular point because everybody always says we've seen more, many people crowning themselves as influencers. And we've also seen or heard of the public crowning people who probably feel they are not even worthy of being called influencers as mm. social media influencers. Mm. Let's start from there. Elliot, mm. your take, what determines one is actually a social media influencer or not? Well, um, from a media buying perspective, mm -hmm. I actually do not subscribe to the word influencer. Mm -hmm. See, what happens in media buying is we are trying to get the word out there in any avenue that we can get. Yeah. That means if I have a billboard, per se, in the city, I'm looking at the eyes that get to see my message on that billboard. Yeah. Now, on social media, it's still, again, the same <coughs> policy. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at somebody who has... 100,000 followers, has 6,000 followers, 5,000 followers. And I'm, I'm doing the math. I'm saying if I put my message with this person, I at least have 6,000 people mm. or 10,000 or even a million people mm. who have seen it. Mm. So then it's not really about the influencing part. Mm. It's the part of um, good media. How can I get my word spread out mm. to more people? Mm. Any opportunity that I, I have, I use. Whether they just post it without Whether uh, they post it without it. caption, yeah. whether they, they post it and don't even talk about it, mm. by the fact that the one million people who follow him mm. have seen that photo, mm. have seen that product, mm. to me, that's what uh, makes sense. That would make sense. So the word influencer really... Uh, to me, as a media buyer, mm. I don't use it mm. that much. You don't see it as anything yes. of significance yes. in that sense. Jackie, yeah. I mean, you have your followers on your social media platform. Yeah. Someone says, everybody just loves what Jackie says on air. And now we also love what she says on uh, her yeah, social, social media, media platform. <coughs> mm. She has people who follow her. And so we believe that if we give her this kind of brand to push through her social media platform, mm. then she is influencing the people to actually buy or buy into that particular product. Is this how you define a social media influencer in your opinion? Well, I think every one of us has a certain degree of influence. Yeah. You meet someone, the way you interact with them throughout the day or even for just a few minutes, whatever you say to them could have an impact. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody feels like, and I keep saying it's not up to me mm. to decide if somebody has followed me over time and they feel like what I say is normally received a certain way by my audience, yeah. and they feel like if I can just get her to say something about me and it attracts this sort of response or mm. traction, mm. then I would rather she say something about my product. Yeah. So I think that is it. Yeah. Influence it is. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. so for you, 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 you wouldn't position yourself mm as a personality <coughs> that is a social media influencer. You would rather people themselves, corporate brands, see you as that and not you to position yourself as an influencer? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Ken, I <laughs> want to read your thoughts as well on what the two <coughs> have actually just said right now. Uh, I think let's first uh, uh, say that communication and marketing as, as you know, uh, professions, some of the most dynamic, you know, when you pull them in a basket, very dynamic, communication itself. Mm. Let me give you an example. Uh, we've been saying I love you for how many years or <laughs> centuries? You know, we've been saying I love you. Th this is the message. Mm. Because you know, in communication, you, you have the message, you have the channel, you have the audience. Mm. So the message per se has not changed over the centuries. It's the channels. Mm 
that we use to deliver the message mm. that have changed. So in the past, we used to say, I love you through a letter via P.O. Box. What's mm. your box number? Mm. You know, that I, I put it and then you wait for two weeks for the other person to get it and then you wait for a response, you know. Today, it's instant, mm. you know. I just text you, WhatsApp, I love you. Mm. And I will see whether you read it and just archived it, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. Mm. So that's how communication uh, has evolved. So <clears throat> when you look at uh, this term, influencer, it's a new term. Uh, just the way you have traditional media, and now we have new media. Mm. Now, new media as a platform has given uh, a rise to new forms of actors. Mm. You know, in the past, you had a news anchor. Yeah. Now you have a blogger who operates on the internet. You know, you have a YouTuber who operates on YouTube. Mm. You have uh, a you know, Twitter influencer who is mm. big on Twitter, mm. Instagram celebrities, you know. All these are new dynamics mm. in a wider field of communication which has been evolving over time. Yeah. Now, let's look at this, uh, you know, new element, influencer. Uh, Elliot put it well that uh, you have to know where you're standing before you get in. Mm -hmm. In marketing communication, there are several aspects at play. If, if you have a message, you have to decide whether all you want is to put it out there mm. so that people can know it's there. Yeah. Or if you have a product to sell, which is sales marketing, you know you want a message to be out, but also followed by action, mm -hmm. which is to make a sale mm. or a decision to buy. Mm. Now, in that case, you have two kinds of, of, of people you need. Mm. Somebody who is actually going to influence decision making mm. to make a decision to purchase a commodity, mm. or somebody who you simply want to give you mileage yeah. in as far as how far does your message get, right. which is audience. Right. Now, if you look at our influencers in the local market in Rwanda, where do you place them? Mm -hmm. Who, whichever influencer you think about, mm -hmm. is he the type of person who is going to say something on Twitter and it will get you buying? Mm -hmm. If they have that kind of power, then I bow. Yeah. You're you've an influencer. Been you, you've, you've been seeing this and I'll come back to but, you. But, but yes. let me conclude. Yeah. But most of what we have are people that Elliot mentioned. Mm -hmm. People who have a substantial audience mm -hmm that when you put it together, mm. it will help you, uh, you know, uh, take your message, amplify your message mm. better than what we have in traditional media, media. platforms. Right. And that's basically where the conversation is right now. I'll right. give you an example. Having been a bat myself, you know, I know that it's a, ba a bad one anymore. Yeah. I was at, with the team at Bank of Kigali when uh, in 2017, we wanted to take off our campaign to mm. celebrate 50 years. And as a team, Clearly, the first objective was we had the three strategy points. You know, first of all, attract attention, mm -hmm. and then engage. You know, I, I'm, you know, and then connect for business. Mm. So that first step of attract attention, we needed noise. Mm. Mm. We needed who we. So we gathered all our communication tools. You know, that we are external facing because we were targeting the external audience. Mm. And I, we used a lot of influencers, mm, mm. and it helped mm. because within a, a, a day or two, our campaign well, was, was already viral, you right. know? So, so what you mean is, uh, just picking from that question you asked, whether in Rwanda, in our situation, we have influencers, mm. or we have people who just carry that message and take it and pass it on to many I other I think audiences. you have messengers. We have messengers. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you think. I, and, I, I, I'd, I'd like to come in and say something. <laughs> Listen. It, this issue of having influencers and people who can actually move a call to action mm. depends on market to market, mm -hmm. right? Now, for example, the market we are in, yeah. I, I, I share away from saying that we have influencers based on the skills of, um, of life and the skills of spend mm. that we have in the market. <coughs> I'll give a very good example. You, Eugene, what you can afford is not maybe what your, your viewer can afford. Mm. But the information that you put forward, if, if they're following you and they see that you have talked about, for example, uh, debate 4 and 1, mm, right? Mm, mm. Or you've talked about uh, your, your show somewhere else, mm. they will be like, ah, okay, okay. So Eugene was somewhere and, you know, it, it's, it's information, it's good mm. for them to know. Mm. But it's not necessarily that they'll actually be able to buy mm. what you're selling. Mm. Now, that's why I say that in this market, we use people uh, who 
the word is not really influencers. Mm. The, the, I, I wouldn't then we wanna, need to find a word. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mm. want to use the word influencers because mm. there is that particular issue that mm. what Jackie can afford, mm. she, I possibly can't afford. Mm. So what Jackie tells me is good. I know it is good. I've seen it. I've known. Mm. So what I've gained is the knowledge of that it exists. Yeah. But, but the purchasing, what if, not yet. Yeah. What if hearing it from Jackie yeah. has caused you to... Create a mental note, make a mental note. Yeah. Whenever I will have some money, yeah. then that thing that Jackie talked about, yeah. I will Ex buy. Exactly. You see, will you I give, have influence too? You see, no, you Maybe gave me I information. I didn't buy it because <coughs> Jackie has it. Mm. Yes. You see what I mean? No, but because even influencing. In future, but even if in future, if you buy it, yes. you'll still have bought it because you first had it from me. I will buy it because I, will have I have influence. information. I have the information. Right. Which I got you the information got from me. that it exists. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have bought it because I talked about it and you just couldn't afford it immediately. Yeah. But even in future, yeah. you still will because of what I have. Again, it's, 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 it's the cycles of how people purchase. Mm -hmm. When How somebody makes a decision of and, purchase. And Actually, Actually, they have the let, first let major me, thing is information. Mm, yeah. If I have information about something, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it now leads me to, secondly, cost. Yeah. I look mm. at the cost of it. If mm. I can afford it, mm. then I can think about it. Right. Mm. Then finally is the trying and then the getting. And then you're getting it. it. Now, you let me, let, let, let's see now purely from, from Jackie herself. Because Jackie, you have even been writing uh, you know, uh, columns and, and some of your columns have been having messages that probably, you know, in one way or another, touches someone some, somewhere, uh, yeah. somewhere in the country or even out of the country to start rethinking some of their decisions and all that. And that, for some people would say, that is influencing. And so are we trying to be too harsh or is Eliud being too harsh <laughs> on those who really call themselves influencers by saying that, no, I don't think we should call people in Rwanda here influencers. They are just messengers. I, 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 is he being I think fair? being too harsh. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me As what. I said earlier, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, every one of us, I believe every one of us is influential. Mm -hmm. it, we won't just be at the same level, yeah. but we are all influential. And yeah. so there's nothing wrong with calling someone in, an influencer. Mm -hmm. It's not about the number of people they have influenced. Somebody could be talking to 10 people, and out of t just 10 people, a life was changed. Yeah. Or a, a kilo of sugar was bought because mm. somebody talked about this particular mm. brand. Mm. In that small way, mm. they have been influenced. Yeah. I wouldn't want us to find them another name. Yeah. Let, them call them, let us call them influencers. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these people have been approached repeatedly, mm. it says something. Yeah. It says that they have a, they have an they audience, have, they have uh, something yes. to, to <coughs> show. Even if it is uh, not in big volumes, mm -mm, for instance, we something. have had events where some people have been called to actually push for those events and probably a ticket or two were bought because someone who was approached to push for that yes. really did push. And this is why we'll it's appreciate them for from. those okay. two tickets that were sold. All right. Th then Jackie, I think that your question of saying, let's find another name. Mm. I think in this market, we should call them endorsers. Mm -hmm. Social endorsers. Mm -hmm. Because what they do is they endorse, mm -hmm. you know? If, 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 for example, taking from that, from that uh, example you've just given, you, if someone approached you and says, Eugene, here is my $10. Mm -hmm. Please just put for me a flyer mm -hmm. on your Twitter handle for mm -hmm. three days. Mm -hmm. All right? You're endorsing. Mm -hmm. So somebody will actually get con convinced to come to this event mm -hmm. because Eugene endorses it. Mm -hmm. And because they, they believe you and they believe that you stand for good things, mm -hmm. if you endorse something, mm -hmm. then it is good. Right. So that's not influencing. It's endorsement. All right. You are endorsing we, we don't have an English teacher here, <laughs> so we might not be able to we find... Might to ask for a dictionary. We might just have to ask for a dictionary. But yeah. let's move this conversation forward. Ken, uh, let me come to you because uh, you are uh, from both ends uh, a media buyer yourself. Uh, communication uh, expert in, in your own unique way. Now, let's talk a bit about how this new thing that we've not even been able to define here on this particular <laughs> show is influencing media buying uh, uh, as far as corporates are concerned, as far as people who want to spend mm -hmm. in passing on information, in pushing their brands is concerned. You know, un unfortunately, because it's new, mm. because it's an emerging uh, um, phenomena in, in the whole uh, conversation of corporate communication and marketing, a lot of the people I know who are in positions of corporate marketing and communication are still trying to understand what even influencer marketing is. Mm -hmm. It's actually a whole new field. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even a, an academic course on it, influencer marketing. So a lot of people who are currently in positions of marketing manager, communication manager, 
if you look at the courses they took at university, these mm. are terms that probably never existed. Mm -hmm. But this is a term, trust me, if whoever is in university right now taking a course in marketing or communication, these are, these are terms that are going to define their academic stay in mm. universities. Mm. So there is now that knowledge gap of people who are in these positions and how fast they actually acclimatize with themselves with uh, these terms mm. is going to shape mm. how whether it takes off, dies, or whatever else. Mm. Now, two things uh, to, to what they were saying. You, you want to put influencers in two or three categories. One, you have the expert. Mm -hmm. Two, you have the celebrity. Mm -hmm. And the three, you have the blogger mm -hmm. or the media <coughs> personality. Mm -hmm. Each of these three people play a different role. Mm -hmm. If Anangwe is an expert at education, mm -hmm. and we know he's taken his kids through education, mm -hmm. if he says something about education, he's going to woo people mm -hmm. because he's known to be an expert. Yeah. Yeah. So people will believe you, not because you said it, but because they know you are an expert at that subject. Mm -hmm. So even in influencing terms, uh, when you're defining the whole term, you, there is an aspect of specialization. Yeah. Are you an expert at what you're trying to endorse? Mm -hmm. Have you used it actually? Mm -hmm. Or are you endorsing it because they've paid you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the moment I know you've been paid, trust me, I'm, I'm, uh, it's compromised. It's a ton of... The trust is, yeah. you know, which is the other problem we're having on this market. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have credible journalists mm -hmm. who have the majority of people following them because they know they are journalists. Yeah. Because I'll follow you because you break... News. Breaking news. Yes. And I follow you because you yeah. work with Arabia. Yeah. I don't follow you because you're, you're a commercial endorser of products. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's just exploiting the audience you have mm -hmm. that you've grown in a different personal approach of yeah. professionalism yeah. as a journalist and then turning it around to make it a side, a commercial, a side a commercial income. Aspect of it. Yeah. Yes, you get. Yeah. Which is not bad. Yeah, I was going but, to say there's but, nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. But we're trying now to put things in context. Yeah. The, the, the aspect of expert expertise. Yeah. Two is the celebrity. Yeah. Celebrities endorse like this. Cristiano Ronaldo has the biggest following on, on Instagram as well as, I think, one of the uh, highly followed on Facebook, across social media platforms. Mm. Over 150 million followers, 140 million followers. Mm. This is a person, because he's so much loved, people are likely to do what he says. Mm. Not because it's right, mm. yeah. but, but because it's Cristiano, he mm. said it. So, the, the, that's why I mentioned earlier that the celebrity bit because Jackie is a well-loved media personality who has a popular morning show, mm. she's more likely to influence me from that aspect mm. if I'm a big fan of her show mm. than because she has a huge number of followers mm. on social media. Right. Then finally is the category of micro-bloggers or bloggers. These are people who are actually also small media personalities, but in, in, in the alternative media platform. You're mm. not a radio presenter, but you have a platform you've built, you have a YouTube channel, you have a blog that people follow, and you carry independent thoughts. Mm. For example, you can review a movie yeah. and give your opinion mm. that I liked this aspect of the movie, I didn't like this. So people who follow you will actually look at your thoughts and influence them to either go for it or not go for it. Right. Now, this is what people who are in these positions of corporate communication need to do. Right. One, you need to define your marketing communication goals. If you really want the sale, try to pick influencers in a separate way. Mm -hmm. For example, the biggest challenge now, if you know that somebody is marked, that he's a paid influencer, mm. it's likely that they, they won't influence psychologically. Mm. But if you secretly moved your budget around town, and let's say you gave, quietly, you know she has enough money, but if you gave, let's say, uh, Patience Mutesi, mm. a, a slight man, and she makes for you a, an innocent looking tweet, mm. praising something, because mm. they know she's not part of the commercial mm. thing, mm. she's going to, people are going to believe her because they'll say, wow, mm. Okay, mm. yes, that believability has to be protected. Right. Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand this from this perspective mm -hmm. of uh, a situation where we have now, uh, you know, uh, uh, marketing managers yes. trying to grapple and understand how they can work 
uh, with uh, you know the, the social media social media outfits. influencers mm. uh, and and the marketing managers in terms of those in 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 in, in these media houses we've seen a sort of a battle mm. it, it looks it looks like uh, we is us against you mm -hmm. you're here to take our market Today, you've made us lose a lot of, uh, you know, c c clients who would come and advertise with us who because are now pushing more buckets, mm. uh, more, more, more money to your end. How do these two entities work together? How can traditional media platforms work with the, the rising social media influencers and still be able to do business in, in this? I, I actually want to, to, to come in and say I've, I've, been, I've been able to have a taste of both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, being active in media yeah. and now being active in the agency side and, yeah. and, and creative side. There was one thing that we need to learn in this market. Media is expansive. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called social media. Mm. It's, it's a media channel. Mm. Whether we want it or not, it's media. Mm -hmm. Jackie said that, you know, um, okay, unfortunately for this market, it's not gotten there. Mm. But in this market, we are having a lot of... Um, of the, of the so-called social media influencers being journalists mm. on TV or radio and stuff. In other markets, these people don't work on any TV station. Yeah. They don't work on any radio station. Mm. They have just opened their TV mm. on YouTube. Mm. A guy sits in his sitting room and he talks and talks mm. and talks mm. and it's TV. Mm. And people follow and they, and they listen. Mm. People have created podcasts. Mm. You know, you create your own radio station that is not even live. You just sit in a studio, invite Eugene because he's your buddy. Mm. You talk, you talk, send it out, and people follow it. Mm. So what and needs to happen... And people will even pay. And people will and actually, pay to, yeah, to be advertised on those yeah. exactly. YouTube channels. Yes. Exactly. So, what, so the, the, the lesson that um, media managers or marketing managers need to learn yeah. is it's not that these social media influencers have come to destroy your whole now make Business. you so confused. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's just time for you to start learning and to start understanding mm -hmm. that there's another channel mm -hmm. that has been introduced in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you are, you're so used to the usual billboards, uh, posters on, 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 on the websites, radio spots, and, and, but mm -hmm. now there is social media, mm -hmm. which is another channel. Yeah. So it shouldn't actually be an issue. So even, social, uh, social, even uh, traditional media houses can become social media influencers through but, their but, Twitter handles. Well, actually, actually, yeah. but yeah. actually <laughs> yeah. now, that, now you've actually brought me to another thing that I wanted to say. <laughs> even the media owners, the yeah. conventional media owners, yeah. should stop selling themselves short. Yeah. They should stop selling, for example, Royal FM Facebook, yeah together with Instagram and Twitter yeah. as an addition to somebody yeah. who has actually bought That's a, the point. a radio yeah. spot. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Social media or Royal FM social media mm. or Royal FM is a different platform. Yeah. Should actually be a different platform from yeah. Royal FM the FM station. Right. Or when they come to you, mm. your, your red card for being on your show yeah. should be very different mm. yeah. from what you actually charge when you're doing it on Twitter. Right. And, and, and that's the way Pretty it's supposed to go. Pretty much my argument yeah. on right. Sunday, because the point was yeah. make these platforms, turn them into products. Actually, yes. it's a conversation of yeah. product development managers yes. right. in, in, in media agencies. Mm. The other point is, which industry in this technology age has not been disrupted? Right. Mm. Which one? Yeah. So the media too should, be, should embrace the disruption mm -hmm. and actually take it positively and do two things. Mm. One, evolve. Yeah. Two, get creative and converge. Yeah. Because the moment you bring in, you invest in all these new media platforms, you're basically widening your scope mm. as, as somebody who sells audience. Mm. You have the print, you have the website, mm. you have your, your, social, your Twitter handle, which mm. has, let's say, half a million followers. Yeah. And all these are platforms mm. which your product development managers can now craft and create tailor-made red yeah. cards right. for your different yeah. you know, right. advertisers. Yes, we have only four Because minutes. a lot yeah. goes into building those platforms, mm. that mm. website, Absolutely. that mm. Facebook page, mm. the YouTube page mm. or Twitter handle. So it's unfortunate that when somebody comes to buy space on air, they ask to be given the rest mm. as, a bonus. as a bonus. That's wrong. So that's wrong. You have to yeah. look so at them with now, moving that. forward. Mm. Now, as individual, uh, you know, social media uh, platform owners, for example, your own uh, Twitter handle and other social media platforms, what sort of advice, what sort of way forward would you be advising other people out there? Because we've talked about how people in other economies are actually making money just out of this. Yes. They come, they do a podcast, and 
because of the following and the, 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 the analytics, they've been able to know the kind of audience and clientele that our corporate brand wants to be associated with. What sort of tricks? How can people turn this into a money minting business? I think what we need to do is when, when someone is approached to endorse a certain product, it shouldn't stop at give me the notes mm. and then I'll just read and coin a tweet out of it. Mm -hmm. People need to go out of the way to experience. Experience. Yes, experience the product. Try yeah. it out. Yeah. So that you're speaking from experience, from deep down. Yeah. It's just not about making the money. Making the money. My, my, my uh, advice would be, yeah. like any other media outlet or like any other media um, product out there, stand for something. Mm. Do not become a jack of all trades yeah. and a master of nothing. Yeah. That means, Eugene, if you do not believe in alcoholic brands, mm -hmm then make it known that mm. me, as Eugene Twitter Media, I don't do alcoholic brands, but insurance, bring it on. Yeah. Family building, yeah. bring it on. Create values you for know, yourself. Mm. Create value for yeah. yourself. Mm. Know which market you play in mm. and play perfectly. Right. These social media influencers in this market, come on, guys, style up. Style up. <laughs> Today you won't tweet for me, oh, certain expo. Tomorrow you're tweeting for me, certain alcoholic brand. Tomorrow you're tweeting a shoe. The other day you're tweeting what for me to go and Yeah, brands. what if they no. believe in yes. all of them? Listen, Will you stop them at the from end of the day, At the end of the day, I'll stop following you because I'll just look at you as another Spun. advertorial... So, Advertorial bean. Mm. Mm. Elliot, let me tell you. You, know. you won't so, stop following somebody because of the endorsements. No, uh, uh, let me tell you. It <laughs> happens. It happens. happens. No, it's exactly. because of that. It starts with, like I, start, like, like I said a bit earlier, yeah. it starts with, I have a reason as to why I follow Jackie. Yeah. 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 I have a reason as to why I follow Twitter. Yeah. So I as long as you. that disappears, you unfollow. Yeah, so the yeah. moment that reason yeah. stops existing, yeah. why am I following <laughs> you? Right, I thank you. My data yeah. doing something else. All right. So for influencers, really, I totally agree with the gentleman. Build credibility. Build some level of expertise on the things you're endorsing mm -hmm. and maintain some level of objectivity so mm -hmm. that even if you're endorsing for, for a fee, also tell me the side effects, if any, mm. so that I make an informed choice. Yeah. Now, on the people on the other side in the, the corporate, yeah. you know, if you're a marketing manager or uh, PR manager, and learn and learn. Mm. Teach yourself. This is a very, very, you know, dynamic field that if you decide to hold on to those. 10 year all the qualifications you have, you have no job. Mm -hmm. You have no job. What a way to finish this particular conversation. And we want to say thank you for making time to be a part of this conversation. We'll keep having this kind of talk. We will be. Jackie, do you feel that this has made you feel like uh, you will put a sponsored bag on your tweets? I'm not doing any of that. You're not doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not even stop inducing products. Right. Thank you so much. Eliud, thank you for your time. Jackie and Ken for making time for this conversation. And of course, for you who's been watching us, thank you for being a part of it. We will actually be the ones to actually drive this, uh, see it to fruition or uh, to failure. Of course, when I say thank you for being a part of it, my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.